This is 5 and 10 on Skywatch TV for November 6th. I'm Derek Gilbert. Again, we break format today because, again, we find ourselves confronting a multiple death tragedy and trying to make sense of it through a biblical lens. Yesterday morning, Sunday morning, 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly walked into First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. That's a rural community about 35 miles east of San Antonio. Opened fire with a semi-automatic weapon. 26 people are dead. That number may increase. Kelly himself was killed after being shot by a local resident who responded to a phone call from his daughter in the congregation at First Baptist Church. How do we process something like this? How do we make sense of something like this? To try to address this, we bring in a guest who has written a book relevant to this topic. Most recently, author of Gods and Thrones, but when we first met our guest two years ago, he had just published the book, Be Thou Prepared, Pastor Carl Gallops. Carl, when something like this happens, immediately questions start, how could we prevent this? How could we do something differently? In, in your book, Be Thou Prepared, you make a case for churches to be ready for an event like this. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you in a minute about you know, why a good God would allow something like this to happen. But first and foremost, as far as a practical, from a practical standpoint, uh, and as somebody with the unique perspective of a former law enforcement officer and a 30-year pastor, what should churches do to be ready for that awful day when somebody walks into their church with a weapon? Yeah, thank you. Well, listen, first of all, thanks for having me on the show, Derek. Uh, listen, yeah, um, I have been in law enforcement in two different sheriff's offices, I, and, and I have been a pastor of one church for 30 years. We have employed a lot of uh, safety and security protocol in our church. Uh, and 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 we've had to we haven't dealt with an active shooter situation, but we have dealt with other matters of of very desperate security, and it has paid off for us to have these protocols in place. But let me just say this: the vast majority of 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 crimes that churches have to deal with do not involve active shooters, statistically speaking. This kind of scenario that happened in Sutherland, Texas, won't happen to your church, <laughs> statistically speaking, because there are tens and tens and tens of thousands of churches across America. We hear of these, and it's like a plane crash. When it happens, it's horrific. A lot of people are hurt or killed, and, and the media focuses in on it. But the bottom line is um, the vast majority of planes don't fall out of the sky. So it, it's similar. However, it is horrific because church is one of those places where people feel that they should be the safest. And it is, uh, it's is—it's one of those places where in our own culture, our collective conscience over the, over the last several hundred years, by and large, has been, don't mess with the house of God, you know, in a worship. Don't do that. That's, that's so ungodly. It's so un-American. The problem is we've changed a lot in the last couple of decades. Our culture has really changed a lot. And I, I fear that these kinds of things may actually increase, particularly in the prophetic days in which we're living. So I tell churches, look, Proverbs 22, verse 3, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it says, look, the prudent person sees danger coming and makes preparations for it. The foolish person does not and pays the price. So the Bible tells us, you know, people say, well, I'm just going to trust in God. Well, of course we do. There are so many things that are out of our control. Of course, we pray for protection over our church. We have people praying for that continually. On the other hand, we do what Proverbs 22 and even New Testament passages to command us to do, and that is use our heads. Look at the culture that we live in. Let's take some security steps. So I tell churches, look, the smallest of churches to the largest of churches. We can all have some security procedures in place. Even the smallest church with a tiny congregation that doesn't have much financial um, ability to like maybe hire uniformed officers, which our church does, or to put in a security system uh, and, and video security surveillance, which our church does. You know, we're blessed. We're a larger church. We have that ability. But even a tiny church can have a roving patrol of volunteer people who will at least be eyes, and in most states, they can be armed. I mean, you know, and you'd have to develop your own protocol and procedures, talk with your insurance company and all of that. I get that. But I'm saying most, even a small church, can have 
at least foot patrol people who who secure kind of the outside of the perimeter of the church, who wander inside while big services are going on, check doors, check entry points, lock doors, make sure people aren't hiding in rooms, those kinds of things. You can do that, and it costs nothing except for volunteers willing to maybe, you know, kind of put themselves in a place of danger. The other thing with today's cell phone communications, good gracious, you don't even have to go out and buy walkie-talkies and stuff anymore like we used to. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's got a cell phone. There's a video camera on it. You know, there's a camera. I mean, you can take pictures, you can take video, you can you can communicate instantly. All of these things that are tremendous. So the thing is, most churches are fairly safe if the bad guy sees that there's something going on in the way of security. That if there are people wandering, people in the foyer, people in the parking lot, people in the buildings that are just casually just walking around and making sure everything is good, keeping their eyes, they've got communication. Some of them may be armed, either uh, open carry if that's allowed or or concealed. Uh, and so that's that's a huge thing that would cost a church nothing. But again, I tell churches that um, if you're if you have the financial means, there's so many more things that you can do with today's technology. You can have video camera surveillance. You can have panic alarm surveillance. You can have hired professional, mm -hmm. uh, you know, law enforcement off duty. They will come. Uh, police department, sheriff's offices. A lot of the larger ones provide that. You can get security training for your church through various law enforcement agencies. There are private corporations that do this for churches. There's just so much that can be done. And, and, and it depends upon the demographics and the size and the location and, you know, exposure to danger and all of those things. Are you an inner city church? Or are you a little country church? Of course, this latest, the worst shooting uh, uh, church shooting in the history of the United States was a little country right. church in a little town. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. kind of hanging out there, apparently with no security protocol. And I'm not blaming the church. I'm just saying, apparently, there was no mention of any kind of real hardcore security protocol and they became sitting ducks and I my heart breaks for them I, I mean I'm a pastor and an ex-law enforcement so I, I see all of this and so anyway there will be more of these kinds of events sadly I'm, I'm afraid there will be you know we can pray that there won't be but I'm afraid there will be we're living in prophetic times in a fallen creation evil people are out there and they hate God's people and they hate the Word of God so most of the responsibility is on God's people now Let's use our heads. Let's protect our families, our churches, our people. Let's be reasonable and rational, but also let's be uh, diligent and vigilant. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Pastor Carl Gallops, the author most recently of Gods and Thrones, his previous book, Be Thou Prepared, is available at the Skywatch TV store. His website, carlgallops.com. And I should point out, uh, if you'd like to hear more of Carl, you can do that every Friday. He's the host of Freedom Friday Radio, 1330 WEBY in the Gulf Coast, but also streamed live to the Internet. Uh, Carl, thanks very much for taking time out of your schedule today. I wish it was over a uh, happier topic. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.